سيدنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي All praises are due to Allah Azza wa Jalla who has made it possible for us to be here to hear the words of Allah in his infinite mercy may his peace and blessings be upon our noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his household members his companions and all those that Allah has used to be instrumental to uphold the the deen that we all know to be the fountain of goodness from our parents our teachers those that are alive may Allah give them good life and a good end those that are with him may Allah forgive their sins their shortcomings and admit them to our jannah al firdaus amin i greet you in the best form of greeting assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh again i'm brought here to come and rehearse what i've learned from my sheikh imam nuruddin may Allah preserve him and all our mashayikh that are in the house Imam Abdullah and, and the likes and um, my very amiable brother Dr. Sharif Dr. Abdul Hakim and the likes may Allah bless all of you for what you do I'm giving the tax to talk about um tazkiyah to nafs which is um the purification of um the soul or the heart as it may be because the word is usually very much interchangeable but um So the best of my knowledge I will try as much as possible to um give us some insight as to how we can purify ourselves but before we begin to address how to purify the soul we need to understand the nature of how Allah azza wa jalla has created the soul and the potential that the soul was given and Allah says in surah al-shams bismillahir rahmanir rahim wa nafsin wa ma sawaha Allah says he swears by the soul that how he has created it in the most perfect proportion the soul is the same for a man and a woman meaning it was created with sound and well proportioned intent on the fitra which is the nature of how Allah wants us to conceptualize things to understand the concept of imam ibn kathir rahimahullah He said what is understanding us of one of sin one masawaha is what he used the verse of the Quran tafsir al Quran al Quran in surah to rom verse number 30 he says fa akim wajhaka lid-din anifa fitrat Allah allati fatara Allah fataran fatara an-nas alayha la tabdila li khalqi Allah dhalika din al qayyim walakin akthar an-nas la ya'lamun is understanding of wa nafsin wa ma sawaha is when he says allah azza wa jalla says in surah to rum fa akim wajhaka lid-din hanifa so o prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a man of a pure faith stand firm and be true in your devotion to the religion fitrat allah lati fatara an-nas alayha it is the true nature and his disposition that god instilled in mankind there is no altering in god's creation la tabdil al khalq allah don't change the nature of how allah intends for the soul to work dhalik din al qayyim this is indeed the religion that is upright walakin akthar an nas la ya'lamun but most people do not realize the potential of what the soul has the brother sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his tradition in his beloved hadith he says kullu mauludin yuladu ala alfitra fa abawahu yuhawidani aw yunassirani aw yumah aw yumajjisani that every person is born on the fitra the nature of wanting to connect to that god the nature of wanting to purify and be a better version of yourself fabawa but the father and the parents are the one that makes them either jew christians or zoroastrian those that worship the fire and whatever you call it and allah continued after he said wa nafsin wa ma sawaha he says 
فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَكُوَاهَا That's Quran chapter Shams, Quran chapter 91 verse 8. The first reference first was verse 7. It says, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَكُوَاهَا Then Allah showed him what is wrong and he showed man what is right. You know, we have the conscience. You know, in one part of the Quran, Allah says, He created Alam Najallahu Ainain. Didn't I give you two eyes to see? Walisan and Washafatain. And I gave you a tongue to speak the truth and the lips to seal the mouth from saying evil things. Wahadeinahu Najidain. Didn't I give you two breasts to know what is right from what is wrong? It is for us to either make pure our heart or corrupt it. Now, the explanation of Ibn Abbas, anhu, he said this verse means that Allah explained the good to man and the evil. And the soul comprehends what is good and what is bad. So when you're about to embark on something, something will whisper to you and tell you, that's a good deed. Something will whisper to you, that's a bad day. That is why when we want to engage in something bad, we look around to make sure that no one is observing or seeing what we're doing. And we think we're getting away with it. But we're forgetting that the eyes of Allah doesn't sleep. Now, every soul is intrinsically aware of the good and the evil, of the right and the wrong, as it relates to God and the covenant to which the heart and the soul attests. The word fujur here is immorality. It is an evil act that corrupts the soul, while the word tekwa is abstention from the evil deeds which purifies the soul. So it's a mirror image of things that Allah wants you to put before your eyes and say, this is good, this is not so good. So two important things we need to know from this verse are number one, we have the tendency to do both good and evil. And it is, a, it is a feeling that we all experience by inspiration because something whispers in our, in our mind, go and do this. Someone says something bad about you, do that, respond. You don't have to take that nonsense, respond. But we have a choice, it is a tendency. It is a natural state. It is a neutral feeling. The second thing, important that we need to know is that Allah has endowed every man's unconscious mind with what is morally good and what is morally evil. And the two are not alike. Then Allah proceeded in verse number nine of the same chapter 91. Allah says, Qad aflaha man zakaha. Allah Akbar. Indeed, he has succeeded and is on success. The one who purifies his own self, obeying and performing all that Allah has ordered and following the true faith of Islamic monotheism and by doing the righteous good deeds. Because it is that, the word zakah there means to grow. You would grow your mind in the positive way when you water it with something positive. Then Allah says, But before we get to The verse speaks to those who clean their soul of lowly and despicable character traits, i.e. lying, cheating, hating for no reason, condemning, not focusing on being a better version of ourselves, actually spending the bulk of our life evaluating others when we need to focus on ourselves. Then Allah says, God, Afla, Manzaka. It is my responsibility, just like it is your responsibility, to nourish our soul in the best way. And what could, what, another verse that could explain God, Afla, Manzaka to us is Surah Al Fatih, Quran chapter 35, verse 18. Allah says, وَلَا تَزِرُوا وَزِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى وَإِن تَدُؤُوا مِثْقَلَّ إِلَّا هِمْ لِهَا لَا يُحْمَلْ مِنْهُ شَيْءٌ 
ولو كانت ذا قربة إنما تنذر الذين يخشون ربهم الغيب وأقاموا الصلاة ومن تزكى فإنما يتزكى لنفسه وإلى الله المصير Allah is telling us in Quran chapter 35 verse 18 that no burden as it placed on any soul. No burden soul will bear the burden of another person. So Allah tells you as I love to see goodness in my brother, Dr. Sharif, and he loves to see goodness in me on the day of judgment. If I've done anything to harm him or to hurt him, because he is bent on getting Allah's mercy and his forgiveness, he would want to get every of his rights, just like I would want to get every of my rights. Allah says, Allah tells you, was there a wizard or horror? I have not placed any burden of someone else on another person. No burden soul will bear the burden of another. Even if a heavily laden soul would cry for help on that day, none of its load will be carried, not even by a close relative. And I gave the example of myself and Dr. Sharif. So if we are friends, even my own wife would not want to carry my own body, and I would not want to carry her own body on that day. Even my own children. That's why I say, Allah says, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْهُ مِنْ أَخِي وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِي وَصَائِبَتِي وَبَنِي لِكُلِّ مْرِئِ مِنْ أُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ شَعْنُ لُبْنِ Everyone's problem will be enough for them. May Allah save us from that day and the torment of that day. But you, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, can only warn those who fear their Lord. Though they cannot see him and they keep up the prayers, whoever purifies himself does so for his own benefit. Everything returns to Allah. He said, وَمَا يَزَكَّى فَإِنَّمَا يَتَزَكَّى لِنَفْسِي وَإِلَى اللَّهِ الْمَصِيرِ It is only Allah that judges. And then Allah proceeded in Surah Shams. He says, وَقَوْ الْخَوَابَ مَنْ دَسَّهَا And indeed, he has failed. Who corrupts his own self disobeying what Allah has ordered by rejecting the true faith of Islamic monotheism or by following polytheism or by doing every kind of evil and wicked deeds. Imam Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, Allah, recorded that Ibn Abbas anhu, said, the messenger of Allah used to stop when he recited these ayahs. When Allah to reveal these ayahs to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was realizing it with the Sahabas, that he said that they reported, according to the report of Ibn Abbas and the record of um, um, Imam um, Ibn Jarir al-Tawbah, may Allah bless them both. He says, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّهَا فَأَلَامَهَا فُجُورُهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will recite this prayer that a lot of us know, but we are here to just remind ourselves and the prayer is, Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha, wa anta waliyuha wa maulaha, wa khaira man zakkaha. Allah Akbar. He say, oh Allah, give my soul its good, the guardian and the master, and the best to purify it. Without Allah's intercession, without his, his, without his intervention, our soul can never be pure or purified. So, Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha, that you are the one that gives the soul a good state. Give my soul that good state that would purify it from all impurities and suggestive ways that will lead to my doom. You are, you are, you are, you are the one that guides my soul and you are the master of the soul. It returns to you every night. وَخَيْرُ مَنْ زَكَّاهَ And the best of purification is with you. So Teskia means to purify, to develop, and to cultivate. So that's what I've been defining all along. So we need to understand the true nature of the soul so we do not take it lightly that the constant effort that we need to make to cleanse our soul. By soul, we are truly measuring the heart or we are truly meaning the heart. Allah says in Surah to Yusuf, 
in verse number 53, it says, mm -hmm. Allah says, Wama ubari unafs. I should not pretend to be blameless. I should not pretend to be without fault. For man's very soul incites him to evil thoughts. Illa marahima rabbi. Except by Allah's intervention. Inna rabbi ghafuru rahim. For indeed Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Zuliha, the wife of Al-Aziz, was a lesson that we learned. She was expressing with this verse that she did not exonerate herself from the blame of what led to the imprisonment of Sayyidina Yusuf Because it was a soul that wishes for the lost. And this is what made her seduce Sayyidina Yusuf Verily the human self is inclined to evil thought except with the intervention and the guidance of Allah. Out of the mercy of Allah that we are able to maintain good morals and thoughts. There are two things that we need to pay attention to when we're trying to purify our soul. The first one is Al-Qalb, which is the heart. The second one is Anafs which is the soul or the self. The heart is a vessel. Whatever you fill them up with is what will occupy them. The heart is always brewing stuff. We feed the soul. Good thoughts and actions will bring about good and sound heart. While evil thoughts and actions will bring about a corrupt and bad heart. Remember the Adit of Rasulullah Sallallahu that says, Inna fil jasad ila mudra, idha saluhat, saluhat jasad kullu, wa idha fasadat, fasadat jasad kullu, ala wa hiya al qalb. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, indeed there's a muscle of flesh in your body. If that muscle of flesh is healthy, everything about the body is healthy. But if that muscle of flesh is corrupt, then everything about that must, about that body is corrupt. Prophet ﷺ says, go and know that that muscle of flesh is your heart. The negative influences of the heart are what the Quran calls sha'awat. They are the low desires. They are delusions of this life, that this life will be forever. So we build and keep building our minds and our images and our network. We expand our net worth and we are deceived about the buildings we erect. For the hereafter, we do not plan by establishing a wonderful relationship with Allah through our salah or in the charity that we give that we would meet before Allah. Because Allah says, Remember the word is nafs here. do in the law. Whatever good you put forth for your soul, you will meet intact in the sight of Allah. And Allah will reward khairun is the best of the words. ajra and the most dignified of rewards that is magnified beyond what has been done is with Allah. So Allah is telling us that we should not lose track of what will make our soul beautiful. We need to connect by salah, zakah, connecting family ties, forgiving those that have wronged us, and on goes the list. Likewise, our desires to eat food are shawat our lust for women or men, they are low desires. Our desires 
incubant on just the things of this life, a nice house, a nice car. There are things kullu man alayya fad wa yabqa waju rabbika dhul jalal wal ikram. Everything will come to cease except the mercy of Allah and his bounties. We need to know that the desires are neutral in the mind because the mind will suggest them. Call your parents. It's a neutral suggestion. Don't call them. It's another neutral suggestion. Send them some money. It's a neutral suggestion. Say, say good things to your teachers. It's a neutral suggestion. Don't respect others. It's a neutral suggestion. These are suggestions that come to the mind. The desire to do them is not necessarily bad, but the value we put in these things at the expense of what will morally and spiritually grow us is what makes it bad. So the real purification is purifying the neutral soul that suggests all sorts of things to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah to Shura, Quran chapter, is it Shura or Shura? I believe Quran chapter 26, verse 87 to 88. Allah says, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَّ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Allah Akbar. A day will come. لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ that your money will have no value. Your successful children will have no meaning. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَّ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except the one who brings to Allah a sound heart, a mind that is free of nifaq, hypocrisy, a mind that is free of shirk, a mind that is free of hasad, envy, a mind that is, full, that is free of al-bukhul, miserliness or greed, a mind that, is submit, that has submitted itself to the true status of what Allah intends for it to be. Remember, the, the heart and the mind is a subject of the fitra, which is the natural state of our Allah intended, intended. The nature of our whole existence is based on how do we purify our hearts so we don't grow heedless or allow negativity to, to dominate it. We have to take ownership of our hearts and actions. We have to guard our minds and bodies from being deserving of our last punishment. We need to be focused first on ourselves and the state of our hearts, then our families. So there are four types of hearts that I want us to think about. They said, you know, it says, Kolbun. فيه سراج يظهر هي قلب مؤمنون أو قلب سليم. You know, I just quoted the verse that says يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم. It says قلب فيه سراج يظهر a heart with a touch of light. That heart is a heart of the believer or a sound, healthy heart that is free of diseases, Qalbun Salim, a heart that rehearses and reflects on the messages of Allah, a heart that is illuminated from within. The soul is pleased with Allah, the soul is pleased with Allah's decree and Allah is pleased with such a soul. And the heart is like a glass that radiates the internal light. The faith and the knowledge shapens that, that actions. And the oil or the passion that keeps us going, that bonds to forge ahead on good deeds is the natural fitra of Allah. Then Allah told us in Surah Al Hijab, Fasabi bihamdi rabbika wa kum min sajideen wa abudu rabbaka. Allah Akbar. That's Quran chapter 15, verses um, 98 and 99. Allah says, Fasabbi bihamdi And him, the praises of your Lord, rehearse his presence, his magnanimity. Bihamdi Rabbika by being grateful for all he has done. Wakum mina sajideen. And be among those that prostrate themselves to Allah 
at all times. Then Allah says, Wa'abudu Rabbaka. Be that person that is in constant worship of Allah. Don't desist. Don't stop. Don't be deceived that you've done enough. Until the inevitable comes to you and the inevitable is the death. And the second heart that we see is Qalbun Majit. Qalbun Majit. It's a dead heart full of filth and things that brings it low, thoughts that abases it. Allah says in Quran chapter 83, verse 14, Nay, but that which they used to earn has covered their hearts with rust. Verily, when the servant of Allah commits a sin, a black spot appears in his heart. If he repeats, if he repents from such a sin, his heart is clean and polished. But if he increases in such a sin, the spot will continue to increase. There is nothing more potent in saving a person from the punishment of Allah than the remembrance of Allah. It is in the zikr of Allah that we would find the, 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 what, the shield from being punished. And the third kind of heart that we find is qalbun maqlubun, qalbun munafiq. A heart that turns upside down. A heart that is always changing. It does not stay in one place. So the comparison is like you allow the person that has such a heart does not allow the goodness that they hear to enter the heart. The possessor of, the possessor of such a heart may pray and fast like you and I, but they do not allow the message that they hear to penetrate in their heart. It's like trying to fill a water, a, bottle, a water bottle upside down and increasing the pressure of the water. Imagine this to be a water bottle and I have a hose underneath it and I'm increasing the pressure. No matter how much I increase the pressure, the water will get to the top, to the back of the bottle and come right back down. So such people, they come to the masjid they listen to the message, but they don't follow it. They don't reflect on it. The Quran, Allah is telling us in the Quran that don't you reflect upon the words of Allah in the Quran, or are there chains that you've ascribed to your mind to change them from listening to what will benefit the soul? So such a person, they are not utilizing their hearts to process the good message. We should not be of those that don't process the message. Even allowing their hearts to point them towards the goodness. It is only the, the, the low suggestions of the, of, of, of the world that they, pry, that they what they pry their mind with, they preoccupy their mind with. So we should not be of those. Then Allah says in Quran chapter 2, verse 10, Allah says, Fi kulu bihim maradun suratul baqarah. Allah says, for these people that have qalbun maqlubun or qalbun munafiq, it says, in their heart is a disease. Allah says, and Allah increases the disease for them. وَلَهُمْ أَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ and Allah says a painful doom is theirs because they lie to themselves and they are deceived by their thoughts. Then Allah continued in Quran chapter 2, verse 11. He says, لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْعَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ These same people, they are very proficient in changing and manipulating words. Allah says, وَإِذَا كِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْعَرْضِ When you tell them, that they should desist from perpetrating mischief on the earth, they would say, Qalu that we are the peacemakers. Allah says, Allah, that no, go and know very well. 
it is they that are the workers of corruption on earth, but they are not aware that they are causing more good than they are causing more harm than good. But they do not know, they are not aware of what they are doing. And the fourth kind of heart is Qalbun Tamuddu Muddatan. Muddatu Iman wa Muddatu Kufru. Fa'um liman ghalaba minhuma. The fourth one is a heart in competition with, with each other. Nothing is competing with this heart but itself. With some elements of good and some elements of evil thoughts enters into the act. Ultimately, one of them would overcome the other. When good, when they see people doing good, they do good. When they see people doing evil, they do evil. They do not have it's the karma. They are not steadfast on what they believe in. They want to fit in by any means necessary. We should not be such Muslims. So our minds and our hearts can be purified in the way that is intended for it to be. Ultimately, one of them would overcome the other. Evil will overcome the good or the good will eventually overcome the evil. This is the category that most of us are in. We are focused on praising ourselves rather than working on improving ourselves. If we want a heart to be pure, we should not be focused on defining ourselves. Rather, we should, we should be focused on refining ourselves. Allah says, Alam Tara, in Quran chapter 4, verse 49, Alam Tara, ila ladhina yuzakuna anfusahum, balillahu yuzakki man yasha, wala yuzlamuna fatila. Allah says, as thou not seen those who deem themselves pure, rather than Allah purifying whomsoever he wills, they shall not be wronged in the hair upon a dead stone, the measure of a hair upon a dead stone. Allah would not wrong them in the least bit. Now we come to the solutions for having a pure heart. Because I want to be within the time allotted. So we can have um, Imam please help us with the questions, inshallah. And the ones that I can answer, I will answer. But I think um, Imam is here. He should be able to help us. What are the solutions to having a pure heart? Number one, always be conscious of Allah in all your dealings. Think of the consequences of your actions before engaging in them. And do them solely for the sake of Allah and to seek Allah's pleasure. Number two, grow and nourish your heart with good things. The remembrance of Allah, prayer, just like Allah said in Surah Al-A'la, Quran chapter 87, verse 14 and 15, Qad aflaha The word Qad in Arabic is used for something that has passed. It is a done deal. Qad aflaha. They have succeeded. Man tazakka. The one that grows his heart, that nourishes it with something good. Wa dhaka rasma rabbihi fasolla. And remembers the name of his Lord, and so he prays. Number three solution to having a pure heart is to detach our heart from the material thing that Allah has given us. We have to learn to detach before we are detached from what Allah has given us. Giving in charity will grow us in piety and purity. In Surah Al-Layl, Quran chapter 92 verse 18, Allah says, That's verses 18 to 21. Allah says, He who gives his wealth to purify in goodness. Not recompensing for a favor thereby that he wants. Except as seeking to fulfill the purpose of his Lord Most High. 
wala sofa yerdo, and surely he shall be content with the reward that Allah would give him. Allah Akbar. May Allah count us among those that will be content on that day. The fourth thing is reading the Quran with reflection and implementing the messages in our life immediately after we learn them. That's why Allah says, Afala in Quran chapter 47, Surah to Muhammad, verse 24, Afala Quran akfaluha. Do you not contemplate on the Quran? Or do your hearts have locks upon them? Number five solution is to absolve your hearts in the constant remembrance of his grace and his might to attain a pure heart with peace radiating it. Allah told in the Surah to Rod, Quran chapter 13, verse 28. That those who believe and whose hearts are at peace in the remembrance of God, verily, it is in the remembrance of God that do your hearts find rest. I ask Allah to forgive whatever I've said that is inaccurate or more than what the Quran has said. Whatever I've said that is of benefit is to the credit of Allah alone. Whatever I've said that is not so good, please forgive me. It is the whispers of shaitan. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun alil mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Takbir. Jazakum Allah khairan to our dear Imam for giving us a soul searching and nourishing presentation. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you abundantly for this beautiful effort. So we now move on to the question and answer. So uh, from the audience, if we have any question for our Imam, Bismillah. You can bring Imam Nordin on as well, inshallah, so he can help me as well. So I guess uh, uh, Jamar, they're a little quiet, but inshallah, I'll get started. Uh, so Imam, uh, you made mention about uh, the purification of souls and the ways that we can uh, take care of ourselves, especially the soul. So, so there's, there's a uh, particular question that does comes to mind when we talk about the concept of the soul. So is the concept of the soul um, identical to that of nafs? If so, um, how can it be interpreted whereby uh, every soul, every nafs is to taste death? And if that's the case, aren't souls uh, eternal? Alhamdulillah, Rabbi. I mean, the question, I think the question I know is more than the person that he's asking. Allah says, Kullu nafs and thai cutting out. Every soul will test death. So the soul is not the persona of who you are. It is an embodiment of what Allah has made you. And when you're talking about ruh, a ruh is the commandment of Allah. That explains the question that you ask. When they come to ask you, Muhammad وسلم, about the soul, the real soul that, ex that exists, that is named Kudus, that is in me, not this physical body. Because it is that soul that we know, but it is the face that we see. Right? Muhammad sallam, tell them that the soul is an errand, a commandment of Allah, the wishes of Allah. 
and what we've taught you humans of the soul that is intact because we learn in the tradition of Prophet that if a person dies, that the body will decay, but the soul will go to the heavens. So it's not the same as the nafs. And I, I stand to be corrected by Imam Nuruddin, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zakhla khayr. Dear members, any question? Also, uh, Imam, yeah, so as you were explaining about the purification of the soul, um, you make mention about fi kulubihim marad. So, you know, there are some souls that are already hardened. So what are some of the ways, I know you talked, what are some of the, you know, uh, tips that you can give us? You know, sometimes there's this, when you try to make da'wah uh, or we try to um, continue to, advise, admonish ourselves and bring us or call ourselves to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But is this that very soul that just want to stay put? What are some of the ways that you can, uh, or some of the tips that you can give such persons? For someone that finds themselves always wanting to engage in something bad, the first thing that they have to do is to evaluate the immediate surroundings. Number one, you know that your environment has a, uh, has a a way of playing into how you process things. So if the environment is not conducive to grow the soul, maybe a change of environment is number one. Number two, they have to look at those that are close to them. The Prophet says, you will be on the religion of your friend. Just like your friend will be on the religion of yourself. Because it is those that are around you that remind you of Allah, that will either point you in the right way or point you in the wrong way. So for instance, if I'm cheating in the business that I do, and you happen to be my friend, and you know the business that I do, and you know that I cheat, it is your responsibility to tell me, brother, I have something I want to talk to you about. You know the business you do, my life, I to put Baraka in it. But I think you're cheating in such a way, and such a way, but I think you can do it this way, and Allah will continue to put blessing in it. You know, it's an admonition. I don't condemn you, but at the same time, I point you in the right direction. You know, that word that you said to me will play behind my mind even before I go to sleep that day. So we have to surround ourselves with positive-minded people that are godly. So when those evil thoughts, the shower comes and the low desires come and the suggestions to us, go and cheat, cheat someone else, you know, do something bad with someone else's wife. You would know that those are shaitan and the people of shaitan that are suggesting these things to you. So you say, I will be lying in the shaitan or again. And you, you don't put to practice those things that are suggested to you. Remember I said earlier that those thoughts are neutral. It is how we implement them and the value we put to them that makes them positive or negative. They're thoughts. We, all, we would always be in constant thinking because Allah has created us to have, you know what? To, to think, to think. That's why Allah is saying, Afalaya to the Barun al Quran. Don't you reflect on the Quran? and the messages is giving you, and the suggestion is pointing you to, because it's always pointing us to the good. I'm Allah Kulubi or your minds are chained, and you're, you're, you're stagnant to always want to be in, in this doom. So that's what it means. So when Allah says, it's not like Allah is not giving them the guidance. He gives them the guidance. So remember I said, Alam wa 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 They have hearts, their heart sells them when they're doing something bad. Why do thieves still at the middle of the night? Because they know that everybody will be asleep, number one, they don't want people to see them. It's another reason. And I don't know the other reason that they have. Melan never make us tips. <laughs> I mean, Jazakumullah Khair and uh, Imam, the excellent last one to to reward you for this beautiful yeah. effort. So this will conclude our question and answer. Um, so now I'll pass this on to uh, Imam, Imam Nuruddin, uh, to pray for uh, lecture, Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
we cannot thank our Imam Holy Tola enough. Well, this is one of the most, the hardest topic. I always see this topic as that because for us to talk about this, we ourselves must have been an embodiment of at least no I'm in a way when we are not complete, you know, we, we should be embodiment of such uh, a soul. And Alhamdulillah is one of the people that I've seen even though we cannot purify anyone before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we are, the scholars say, la nuzaki ala Allah ahadan. We, uh, we cannot purify anyone before Allah, but we can say the level that we know. Uh, he is an embodiment of such thing himself. So perhaps that make it easier for him to research for it. And as he has researched for it before, uh, and Perhaps many questions may not come also because this topic is a topic that touches each and every one of us. It's a topic that matters. Uh, every single one of us must have passed through this one way or the other. Must have, it is a topic that, subhanAllah, when you see the way we, you're behaving, the way I'm behaving, towards people or towards myself, then you, there's no way you are not going to check yourself and see how pure your soul is. So this is a topic that teaches us how to purify ourselves and the state of our mind, how, you know, what it should be. Um, and this is something that is meant to make us check ourselves. You know, every single one of us, believe me, including myself, as he was giving us the lecture, I was checking myself and I see how much incongruencies and imbalances in my own soul that needs to be fixed. And every single one is like that, believe me. And we thank you very much for making us check ourselves. And thank you very much for talking about this particular topic because it's such an important topic without which we cannot even attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan. Please, brothers and sisters that have listened to this, let's look at every single point made here and purify ourselves. Let's look at every single point made here, purify ourselves and purify our souls through these teachings. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, reward our Imam abundantly abundantly. May Allah reward you for the beautiful lectures and for your devotion all the time. May Allah continue to bless your family. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa wa rahmatullahi wa Imam. Thank you so much for having me. Um, may Allah continue to bless um, the Naim community. Um, you are the exemplary examples um, all across the globe. Allah will strengthen you and Allah will never put any one of us to shame. Um, um, Allah has made a promise that our future and our meeting with Allah will be better than the life that we are currently experiencing. Whatever phase we are in in this life, we should know that it will pass, but we should have the istiqama with Allah and never lose hope at any point in time. May Allah never forsake you as the leader of the community. All those that I have put in your care, that are also leaders in this community, Imam Bashir and um, Sheikh Alugo and other Mashaikh that are with you, may Allah bless all of them and be with them. Those that I know and those that I don't know, all those that are in the leadership, the executives, um, the BCLUs, um, the um, Adibulis, and those that I don't even know. May Allah bless all of you and grant you alternative for those. This is an opportunity for all of us to remind one another of the goodness that is in the Quran. You know, We should not let our souls deceive us that we've attained any, any status. I'm not better than the person that is listening to this lecture. I am just rehearsing the message and hoping that one day I would perfect this as well. May Allah forgive whatever I've said that is not accurate out of my own involution. And everything I've said that you find benefit, give all the credit to Allah. Subhanahu wa
رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين وحمد الله السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته نعم فرزين بسم الله بسم الله أريد الله جزاك الله خيرا في الدنيا والآخرة we thank you for the beautiful lecture and the special dua that you share final the last one so everybody may the prayer that you you gave be answered by Allah accepted by Allah and you for your family and for everyone we say thank you for giving and sharing with us even though the demand is there for you. Uh, within your jama, they might need you right there every time. But whenever we call on you, you're always there for you. Uh, may Allah be there for you at all times, inshallah. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen, uh, members of Nigeria.